Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is probably the 2013 British Open that I won and Hull football pitch. <laughs> the fact that they had the court on a football pitch that I think will forever be known as the squash court end. <laughs> um, and the mix of emotion and squash and feelings and everything that went on in that year from the weather to, you know, the crowd, it was switching to a plaster court mid tournament. It had everything that event and um, yeah, the, the 2013 being on a football pitch probably just springs to mind the most. <laughs> Egyptian lady ever to win the British Open, the most prestigious title on the PSA World Tour. All the emotion is there, quite right now, oh, it's wonderful to see. The people whose names are on that trophy are special, special squash players and you want your name next to them. The trophy itself just feels old and special, but in the best possible way. So, yeah, I think that's for me personally, and I'd probably say, you know, for a lot of other people as well, that's why the British Open is just a little bit on a pedestal um, because it's, it's a special event with special people's names on there. And as a squash player, you just want your name to be special too. What must be going through Laura Massaro's mind right now? Oh, she's done it! She's done it! Absolutely amazing! Laura Massaro is the first English lady since Lisa Opie back in 1991 to win the prestigious British Open. What a steely performance by the world number two. Thoroughly deserved. And I hope there's floods and floods of tears because she is quite extraordinary. The, the memories were that I was playing really well. The, there's always nervousness and expectation and you want to do as well as you can. The home crowd obviously can be a huge help, but it can also be a huge pressure as well, particularly if things don't go well and you get that eerie quietness of the crowd when things are just not going as people expected. But then the flip side is just hearing the roars when you play a brilliant rally. So. I remember feeling <clears throat> that things were things were going well and I think I'd, I had a pretty solid position as world number two at the time and um, had a, actually had a really tough first round in the freezing cold, possibly some of the coldest conditions I've ever played in. Um, Danny could hardly talk to me between games. They had heat gloves and blankets and I played Dipika Palakal first round and went 1-0 and way down in the second and I'm just thinking wow this is all going to be over before it even started and somehow no idea how I managed to turn that around and win the second game and then win the match and for anyone who's seen the clip quite dramatic ending where she tripped over my foot and bent literally bent the glass in the backhand sidewall um, I won the match on a no let decision for that and and then as the as the tournament went on, I think the weather conditions were quite were quite bad the through the event. I think we, we moved one round to a plaster court at Hull and East Riding, which was completely different circumstances. And I played Omneo Abdul Kawi on the plaster court, which is the worst place you want to be on, you know, against Omneo. You don't want to be um on a plaster court against her. She can lengthen that out much better than I can. So another brilliant win and yeah, hugely proud of hugely proud of that, and and then I think just feeling feeling excited with with the fact that I was probably in I think my first semi final at that point. And there's the bottom of the tin hit by Renee Malwiley, and that is Laura Massaro's victory in this semi final and puts her into. The Alan British Open final 2013. What a super performance. Played really well to beat Raneem in the semi final, and I'd played well all week, um, even in that first round to find a way to come back. I remember the night before the final, we had sort of like a, a dinner s function thing in the, in the football club, one of the function rooms, and 
I think it was Vanessa who was interviewing and there was the four finalists, um, Greg, Rami, myself and Nicole, and we were told that we, you know, would come up to the front and ask, a f ask answer a few questions. And I remember not really being asked much. Um, I sort of felt like I stuck out a bit like a sore thumb with them three. And they, I think I probably got asked really, and I'm probably remembering it all wrong, but I, I probably, I just got asked, you know, how excited I was for my first British Open final. And that was it and probably didn't really, I, I knew I'd had a couple of wins over Nicole and I knew that I was capable, but then actually doing it and doing it on such a big stage in such a big arena, you know, there's always a part of you when you were playing Nicole when she was at her best that you just didn't want to get absolutely hammered and I didn't want to get hammered at home. Sort of a mix of emotions really, I guess. I knew I was playing well enough um, to win, but at the same time didn't have any expectations to and didn't really think anyone else had any ex any expectation that I would actually go on and win the next day. So to perform as well as I did and the weather completely changed. Talk about difference from the first day to the last day, bright sunshine, everyone in their sunglasses, nice, warm, toasty conditions. And yeah, just a really, really high quality match. I watch it back now and it's actually n nowhere near the level of squash I'm playing right now. But at the time I just played what I thought was the best level of squash I've ever played. And yeah, to do, to finally get the win and to see the ball go in the tin from Nicole on match ball and to have all my friends and family there and um, the home crowd just going bonkers and their first British woman for 22 years. It just, it was such a, it was just unbelievable, really. Can you only imagine what she's feeling right now? Obviously the first win over Nicole was huge. Had I gone into that British Open final having never beaten her before, we could have been looking at a different story really. So I'd, be, I'd beaten her a couple of times in the lead up to that tournament. And you don't beat, you, no one was beating Nicole often in those days, but I was beating her probably more than most. And so you get to the British Open and you know it's a whole different ball game, but you know you're in with a chance. And yeah, for sure, on the back of that, you know, I won the World Championships in the same season. It was the 2013 World Championships, but it was actually 2014, March 2014. So nearly a year later when I actually won the World Championships. And you go into that event and sat on the plane, you know, believing that you're there to win the tournament. And, you know, when you get at the time, it was 32 main draw, 32 qualify and you're turning up. And there's not many players, I think, that if they were brutally honest, believe that they're going there to win the tournament. Um, and I did. I got on the plane you know, to go and win that tournament. And it, it didn't pan out how I thought it would by any by any stretch. But I think the British Open played a massive pivotal role in sort of making sure that I believed that I could win a title like that against the best in the world and do it, you know, five days in a row. So yeah, probably probably a huge amount of, of belief from, from the British Open win. A, all a grey matter here. Both of these ladies breathing so heavily. This match ball, British Open. Perry fighting for her life here. Down. Well, she's hit the error. Can the error see? from Sarah Jane Perry has handed the title to eliminate. Laura Massaro. Six, eleven, eleven, six. Sarah Jane Perry coming so close, had a magnificent tournament herself, but Massaro takes her second title here at the Alam British Open in 2017. Incredible achievement by Laura Massaro, who's just taking it all in at the moment. Wonderful scenes, a wonderful achievement for Laura Massaro. Totally, totally different to winning in 2017, where I'd had a joke event and beaten um, Noor Shabini and Raneem and El Walili then to go into the final, have all of the pressure piled on me against Sarah Jane Perry, because then I was expected to win. And I think that's probably, you know, one thing I'm most proud of over my career, that whatever the situation, I've found a way to deal with the nerves, to deal with the expectation. And the two British Open titles that I've won probably 
probably highlight though every single emotion that I've felt over my career from the start of the 2013 that I described to the end of the 2017 probably looking at you know 10 matches played in those two events and I think a couple of finals in between as well that I've that I've lost so the British Open I feel has always been a huge a hugely successful enjoyable event and um, I'll always love going to Hull because I've had some unbelievable successful moments there. Even even losing in the final is still a ridiculously proud moment to make your way through a tournament like that. So yeah, just just huge amount of, of pride, I guess, um, and to be able to do it at home. And it just seems really right that, that the British Open is the last event for me, somewhere I've had you know, a huge amount of success and to be able to play it in front of the home crowd and in front of friends and family and you know just just want to do do myself proud in the last event and what will be it will be I've uh, my career is set with what it is the British Open the last event's not going to make or break my career but you know I'd love more than anything to perform well there and hear the crowd get behind me one more time knowing it's my last tournament um, I saw how how they did that with Nick Matthew last year and how it just elevated him so much so yeah, just looking forward to it more than anything. I'm sure there'll be a few nerves, but um, at the same time, just you know, knowing that I, I can step on court and just give it my all for the last event will be something to really look forward to.